Do you know what they call someone that can use their mind to move objects? I think I'll put you down 70 years from now. You do know what they call someone that can send you through time. Detective, get in. We don't have much time. Who are you? My name is Scott Carey, and the man who sent you here murdered my family. Why should I trust you? Because I know about Eastman. And because I'm the only one who has the answers you need. Let's go. My brain was spinning like the ball on a roulette wheel. I didn't know where it would stop. I only knew it wouldn't be home. I'd never traveled through time before, but I can tell you the brochure wouldn't do it justice. I'd been stabbed twice before, once in the shoulder by an angry debutante who didn't appreciate me sending her father to the can for embezzlement. That one sent me to the hospital. The second time was a cabbie who stabbed me in the belly because he thought I didn't cough up enough dough for a tip. That one kept me in the hospital. Both of those were a gas compared to time travel. My mug felt like it was melting and my gut was like a chunk of prime roast underneath a meat cleaver. It was all I could do to keep from throwing up while my new pal gave me the full Megilla. Fortunately, the booze helped. You know, I've been waiting for you for a long time. How could you know anything about this? With this? Hunter Eastman's diary. He was very meticulous in writing down his day-to-day -day activities, including the ones that involved his special abilities. 
He was especially descriptive about his encounter with you. Right down to the day, time, and location of my arrival. And this just happened to drop into your lap? My grandfather and Eastman were partners, real estate partners. After my grandfather was murdered, my father inherited his holdings. Soon after, Eastman inherited his estate and sold his stake in the business. Then he disappeared. Where to? I don't know. But he left everything behind in his office, including that diary. My father found it, read it, and went to the police. But they said it didn't prove anything, even though Eastman brags about killing my grandfather. Those are the breaks, kid. My father died of a broken heart a few months later. I found that going through his things. I want Eastman to pay. I hate to be a wet dish rag, pal, but you need to hang it up. I'm a gumshoe from another time with an empty dance card, peanuts in my pocket, and an empty hand in need of a gun. But I can help. I've got money. And this. Forget it, buddy. I'll find my own way. How are you going to do that? You need me. I can get you back to your own time. And how exactly do you plan on doing that? When someone time travels, quantum particles adhere to the body like a cocoon of sorts. They protect the body's molecules from accelerated decay as they move through time. However, after the first trip, those quantum particles become unstable. To take a second trip, you'll need a booster. There's a device that can strengthen the integrity of those particles by extracting them from your body and attaching fresh quantum particles to them. Once that's done, it's just a matter of stimulating the particles and reattaching them to your body. Before you know it, poof, 1945. You just need to sneak past armed guards, break into a lab, and crack a safe. We'll wait till nighttime. Swell. While I waited for nightfall, I needed to loosen my collar and let my dogs press the bricks. When you come in out of the sun, they say that it takes time for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. But here, it was the same darkness that haunted every street corner since I could remember. Clothes were different, and there were more people wearing them, but it was the eyes. The hollow pits that screamed the kind of desperation that told someone to give up the ghost. That the silver lining in every stormy cloud was only made of nickel, and instead of raining cats and dogs, it was more like a hail of bullets. Justice was as flimsy as paper, and the words printed on it were all lies. If I was a holy roller, I'd believe we were all going to hell but I knew hell was just the return address everyone wrote on the back of an envelope. I'd been around a long time, saw a lot of things I couldn't share with most people, and did a lot of things I could never share with anyone. Probably why most people didn't get along with me. Even those that helped me take the edge off always took a powder in the end. Of course, I made sure of that. I didn't belong here in this time. I felt lonely. I hated to admit it, but I wondered if I belonged anywhere. Fortunately, the sun was setting, and it was time to go to work. Take the highway into the gas lamp district. Park on 5th. Make your way to Market at 9th. Tower 180 degrees should be almost empty. Going through the parking garage. Take the stairs to the 14th floor. Down the hall on your right, stop at the corner. There'll be a guard a few doors down. Turn left at the next corner and you'll find the other guard.
Landry's main office is the last door on the right. Just like in the movies. Piece of cake. Don't need this anymore. Still. Ready? Go ahead. Um, I have no idea if this is going to hurt. Just do it. Okay. Are you all right? Did it work? Yeah, they're all there. Well, how long do we have to wait? We let the particles get nice and agitated. A few hours. Good. I've got my own little revenge plan to put into action. There's just one problem. What's that? You're not going. Let me guess. You are. Not quite. That ticket is reserved for me. Eastman. Well 
called Detective? It's been some time. Seventy years. Let me guess. Eastman's grandson? A bit slow, but yes. Stuck in time, are you? I arrived a few days ago. I had the most delicious plans for you. I've cut many people out of time. But this is the first time I've traveled myself. I was unaware of the quantum problem. I'm afraid I let my ambitions get the better of me. The people that owned this house, I take it you killed them. You should have seen the look of shock on their faces when I just appeared in the middle of their living room. <laughs> Fortunately, my grandson has agreed to join the game. By combining your particles and my own, it will be sufficient to send me back and send Sonny to the electric chair. He wouldn't do that. You do know your grandfather framed his husband, sent him to a death sentence. Family loyalty, you know. Nice try. There's still time to do the right thing. You run out of time, detective. Did you forget what I can do? There's no one in the world with the power to stop me now. I'd like to test that theory. What took you so long? Traffic. Who are you? Grant Williams. His grandson. Explain something to me. Why have you steal the machine from the lab if he could just take it himself? There's probably a surveillance system you didn't know about. I'm caught on tape and wind up in the big house while he sets sail for home. What was that thing you used against him back there? For every force, there is an equal and opposing force. My device collects the energy from his mind hammer and just throws it back at him. At least it did until it burned out. The important thing is we were ready, and we beat them. And yet you were as prepared as Pearl Harbor on December 7th. It's not my fault I was late. How the hell did they get the jump on us? According to what you said was in his diary, you weren't supposed to be back for another two hours, and his grandson wasn't even supposed to be there. Somehow, you're changing events. Or maybe he's just a bad writer. Why are we back here? It doesn't make sense for him to kill the owners and then stick around for a few days. Unless there was something special about that house. There are pockets of dimensional flux that operate on a quantum level, like a conduit between time periods. Temporal tidal gravity could coalesce into a perturbation of space, converting to the Planck-Wheeler length, allowing a singularity that presupposes a wormhole I suppose this could be one of them. 
Does anybody understand when you talk? Physicist, remember? You know, if you die, I'll never be born. The grandfather paradox, literally. I discovered Google today. We don't have a weapon. We have you. Yeah, if it works. When I tell you, flip that switch. Detective. Hands up. I've been expecting you. And you're... I'm here. Now that we're all here, I can conclude this rather annoying trip and return to my own time. I promise I'll be more attentive to the details before my next excursion. Until then, detective, you can spend the rest of your life in this present. I'll try to pop in on occasion. What about me? Don't worry. I haven't forgotten about you. No. 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 <laughs> now, detective, it's your turn. Pick up the gun. Aim it at your grandson. Now would be a good time, kid. Stop! I don't think so. What did you do? Your mind hammer works as a wave. I just redirected that wave back into your device. Those quantum particles you're bathed in are no longer useful for time travel. They work more like a cocoon against your powers and... Oh my god. I don't believe it. He's miniaturizing. No. It's not possible. Whoa. Um, there's a problem. This device is losing power. Have we had a normal size? I don't think so. But there's a good chance his mind hammer power will come back. That's no problem. You wouldn't dare. Looks like you're stuck here. Yeah. We could make it work. I don't belong here, kid. Probably never really belonged anywhere. If only...
What's wrong? I don't know. It must be some kind of cellular connection to the quantum particles. As I continued to shrink, the screen mesh looked like prison bars until I became small enough to fit through. But what freedom could I expect? I was losing my identity, becoming less and less of myself, dwindling to nothingness until that was all that would remain. Nothing. Is this what death was like? Falling deeper and deeper into an infinite abyss until the space was too small and life was squeezed out? The darkness I had so comfortably spent my life in now threatened to swallow me. I looked up into the night. It was odd, but the night sky looked no further away than it always had. And I remembered something. We were all made of stars. The same atoms that form the cosmos are the same ones inside me. If we're all part of the same thing, this collective blueprint of reality, then maybe I had never really left my time. The materials of life were always present, reforming over and over, but essentially staying the same. And now I was joining them, going further than anyone had gone before. A new adventure that would bring me answers to questions maybe no one had ever thought of. I didn't know what lay ahead, but I wondered if I finally found where I belonged. <laughs>